Hello guys, welcome back to video 23 of 24 in this huge, 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 huge series. Why did I choose to do this? It's so tiring, but it's good fun though actually. It's quite nice talking through it all because you get to see uh, and talk about things that I've forgotten about really. It's so easy to go with these things in terms of recency bias and just remember the good things you did at the end or the bad things you did at the end. But I've tried to really delve through back through the seasons and see how they got on because September feels a million miles away, doesn't it? I can't even remember most of September. My memory is so short with these things. But I've really tried to look back and try and give a whole picture of all the and hopefully I've done that in general. And so this is the turn of Gabriel Jesus, the penultimate video in this series, followed by Sergio Guerrero very soon. Obviously Sane still in today as well. Come check out all them. Uh, but this is Gabriel Jesus' turn, uh, which was, um, it's tough to rate Gabriel Jesus. Uh, what I'm going to do is in this video, I think I might... No, I'm not going to do the score really. I'll let you wait for the score. But essentially, um, I've already decided my score for Gabriel Jesus. But it's really hard to judge these players uh, based on the context of Manchester City Football Club. Because what would be a phenomenal season for a mid-table team is only just a good season for Manchester City. So Gabriel Jesus' season, if he was at Newcastle or West Ham, he'd be brilliant. He'd be like, oh, he's their best player. He'd be so good, potentially. But here it's just another guy who's had an alright season compared to Sterling, Bernardo, Aguero, all that lot. He gets to compete with their levels of excellency and brilliance. So it's very hard for him to do that. Having said that this season, he was a good player. He was an alright player. He was very frustrating at times and it was a period where he seemed to miss every single major chance that he had which really conflicted uh, against his general overall brilliance in every other part of his game. Gabriel Jesus is the kind of striker that managers love. He works exceptionally hard. Uh, he runs the channels really well. He's 1-2, he's link-ups, he's, he's so intelligent. His movement is brilliant in general. He's willing to really put a shift in. He just sees the game excellently. I think it's fair to say that his overall link-up play and game understanding is probably a little bit higher than Aguero's but but he's nowhere near as clinical, as sharp, and probably as clever uh, as Aguero when it comes to finishing and all that kind of stuff. Though Aguero has obviously taken massive strides this season in terms of improvement of his all round game, which I'll get onto the next video. But Gabriel Jesus has some incredibly, uh, yeah, he's incredibly gifted in terms of game understanding. This is why Guardiola likes him. Having said that, he still couldn't usurp uh, Aguero this season and had a very mixed season. Now, in terms of statistically, he still finished the season uh, with 21 goals in all competitions. That's 47 games he had to, that's a goal every 107 minutes. So that's a pretty good record on service. It, 21 goals, 47 games. Now, you have to be honest, though. Seven of those did come in three back-to-back -back games. He scored four against Burton, one against Rotherham, two against Wolves. He had a hat-trick there uh, in an early-season game versus Shakhtar. So that's 10 of the goals there um, in four games. So that's only then 11 goals in 37 games, which sees a big drop-off there, essentially. I know you can do that with most strikers, but it is worth pointing that out, that... You know, it's a, it's a something to consider at the very least. That's not to say as a backup striker it isn't good, it's just something to consider overall because it's placed a slightly different picture. He also has this very weird tendency for offside that we've all seen that became very frustrating. We shouldn't get as frustrated as we do about it admittedly, but it is frustrating watching a guy that you know is going to be offside four times be offside four or five times. There's definitely an argument to say that this is just a result of eagerness and because he doesn't play very often. And uh, Gabriel Jesus, more than most strikes, he's the kind of guy who needs a run of games to get his confidence up, to get his confidence in front of goal, so he doesn't snatch at chances. And there were some signs that when he was playing often, and it was mainly when Aguero was out a little bit around uh, November, December time, um, and when he played the cup games, he started to get his composure in front of goal. A couple of lovely finishes where he sat the keeper down. And he showed how good he could be. Now, obviously, his crowning moment was in the last game of the season against Watford. An absolutely fantastic performance that was. Arguably, some would say his best performance in a blue shirt match to see him. Maybe, maybe not. I think he's had some fantastic games as well. But this one was fantastic. Uh, he ran the line so well against Watford. Some of his individual moments are brilliant in terms of skill. His finishing was really good. Uh, two goals and assists that day. He was just... Brilliant. You would never know Aguero wasn't in that team that day. It must be terrifying for the rest of the league uh, to see Aguero drop out and Gabriel Jesus, Brazil's number nine or whatever, come in and be that good. He's only 22 years old, Gabriel Jesus, as recently as April, if that's correct. Let me just double check that. Uh, yes, so he's only a young lad still. And he's obviously got that really huge weight of being the second striker behind Sergio Aguero. It's so hard, you know. It's genuinely hard to be the second striker behind a man uh, as legendary and as iconic as Aguero at Manchester City. He's all record goal scoring, you know. It's so hard to be guaranteed to be behind him at all times. It takes a very certain kind of mentality to do that. And when he's gone from someone who's essentially the star boy over in Brazil to being the guy who has to look up as someone else more senior than him, which he'd admit himself. And a guy who's uh, admittedly very emotionally attached to his family. He misses them all and the cold 
cold, hard winter months in Manchester can be taxing for a man. You know, honestly, it's miserable looking out those windows sometimes. Imagine what it feels like for a sunny family boy from Brazil. Sometimes it can be tough, essentially, and you have to consider these off the field circumstances and also the weight of being a second striker. Quality strikers have struggled being the guy behind Aguero. Look at Edin Dzeko, the kind of guy who you put him as the first choice striker somewhere, he bags 30 plus goals a season. It's always very hard to be the second fiddle guy behind someone like Aguero. But uh, he's done a good job. I still think he's very close and it could be next season where he has his breakthrough season where he plays up front. His overall game will be brilliant and he'll score 30 plus goals a season. He got 21 this year despite uh, going through large patches of not scoring very regularly, missing loads of great chances and he's still got 21 goals if he's just like 30% more clinical you know okay, don't do the mask it's probably still not 30 goals if you had it all together but either way if he just gets a little bit more clinical more confident and some would say he's two years younger than Sterling and does it not, this not sound familiar from two years ago it was indeed if he gets more clinical we're looking at a 30 plus goal season striker uh, and Aguero as good as he has been he's never been the guy to get 35 plus goals and I feel like Gabriel Jesus could if he gets a little bit lucky I'm not saying he'll be as good as him but he could be more clinical in the way he moves because I think he's got exceptional movement Gabriel Jesus overall in terms of his score I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10 because I said earlier uh, by his standards um, you'll be like mm, but it's still a very good performance he's a good squad player's performance he was very useful in this team he had some good performances some bad performances but overall he contributed to this team he didn't have a shock of a season he had a good season uh, and if this was a, a mid-table club they'd be saying he was their best player of the season I genuinely believe that and he'd be playing every single week and scoring more goals maybe uh, I really like Gabriel Jesus he works really hard he's very likeable he's just got some rough edges that we really need to iron out and before we know it he could go from a 7 to an 8.5 to having a 9.5 kind of season he's got loads of potential and hopefully he'll be here next year and anyway guys let me know if you agree with that we've got one more video left one more and it's that man Sergio Con Aguero coming up after this video so make sure you hang around make sure you subscribe make sure you check out the other videos today Sterling and Sane go check out the other 20 odd as well that I've done so far it's nearly coming to an end uh, as the domestic season closes uh, make sure you like subscribe comment and thank you to these guys as ever and I'll see you for the next video very very soon